Well, hello everyone. Like most people, I've been really sad this year in the dog collecting community as so many of our beloved and regular events have been canceled or been placed online due to the current public health situation. One of those, the Ohio National Doll Show, was a highlight for me on my calendar. I went last year, I had a fabulous time and met so many great people. This year, the show will also be online instead of in person because of COVID, which is kind of sad, but in a way gives us an opportunity to gather online and look at pretty dolls online and do a little learning that way. It's different, but it is what it is and we'll make the most of it. So in order to make the most of it from my end, I was hoping to share with you some fun, some really nice, fun, joyful pictures and a little story about Stife's children dolls as part of this event. And so that's what I'd like to share with you today in a very brief presentation that hopefully will get you excited for these adorable dolls as well as get you excited for the upcoming Ohio National Doll Show. So let's get started. Or as the presentation is called, come on, let's play. And here we go. Here are some dolls that you see. These are wonderful Stife dolls from the early 19 teens and they are getting excited and getting ready to attend the doll show. Let me tell you a little bit about today's program very briefly. I'm going to give you a very brief overview of how uh, Stice's children dolls appeared in the line from uh, you know the very turn of last century through the late 1920s. I'm going to show you some great pictures and some details about those wonderful children dolls. I'm going to give you some dating hints on these dolls because their production did span a couple of decades and it's nice to know when your doll may have been produced. I'd like to share with you some advertising and promotional pictures and ephemera, which will bring these dolls to life within the context, within the era they were produced. I'd like to share with you a display that features these wonderful children dolls that was, that was uh, done in the late 1920s, and then talk about what happened next after the children. So that's our brief agenda, and here we go. So let's talk about a doll production overview. So pre-war, Children appeared in the Stife doll line from the very beginning, but they changed dramatically over half a century that you see here. Um, the earliest dolls were bisque with head felts, with uh, bisque heads with felt bodies and, uh, and felt clothing. Uh, a little bit afterwards, you're gonna see an all cloth sort of cartoon like doll. This doll debuted in 1902 through 1914. And you can see he's definitely a child, but is a little bit, um, on the, the, the primitive design scale. The all cloth children dolls that we all recognize and know and love, and most collectors who love dolls also love these beautiful children, they debuted in about 1908 and appeared in the line through the late 1920s. And here you can see the little doll in the red vest and the black pants is very typical of these children dolls and the ones that we're going to talk about the most today. And then finally, the doll on the far right, she is all cloth with a pressed felt face and she was in the line from about 1936 through 1950. And these are the dolls that replaced the uh, seamed children doll that we're going to be talking about today. So let's take a little deeper dive into these children dolls from the, uh, about the 1908 to the 1920 period. First of all, the very first, what I would call childlike or very, very endearing, very youthful doll appeared in 1908. And this was what I consider sort of the transitional doll between the more cartoon looking children and the real children with adult proportions. So this little girl here uh, was named Mousy through 1909 and Dolly from 1910 through 1921. So she debuted uh, very early in the line, about 1908. Um, she has a baby-like presentation. She was produced in 30 centimeters. She's shaped like a bottle. You can see her, her torso really looks like a like a Coke bottle or something like that. And that was, she was designed sort of for a child to hold and, and shake as she had a, a voice in her belly. She has a vertical center seamed face and her outfit was integral to her body. What's interesting about this particular example from my collection is that across the chest, it says Bebe, which is French, meaning this doll was produced for the French market. Usually it says Baby, B-A-B-Y, produced uh, for the regular line in the market. So here on the left, you can see two of these beautiful, typical children dolls 
from that 1908 through 1922 period, you see they have an absolutely charming and rosy presentation. They are just eternally happy, eternally beautiful, and eternally glowing. The smallest ones produced were about 22 centimeters, and they were produced up to 75 centimeters over time. And for the most part, the 75 centimeter ones were special orders and designed for window displays and such. What's lovely about these dolls is they were named, each one had a name, and they had human proportions. They were all felt or felt or linen construction, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. They have vertical center seamed faces. In other words, the, 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 cent, the seam goes from the top of the head to the bottom. And they also have little tiny horizontal eye seams that you can see on these two dolls. And those are right near the eyes. And those were put in place to give the face a pleasing and uh, sweet roundness. The dolls are fully jointed with mohair wigs integral to their heads. Their clothing was removable and very well made. The girls, for the most part, have hats and shoes. So they're always ready for a, for a, a walk in the park. And these beautiful children proportioned and looking dolls were produced as students, as regional characters, as these dolls here on the left are um, a little Dutch boy and girl, and they were also produced as farmers. A special order version of these lovely children um, had long hair, and here you can see this beautiful girl, and she is from the Nancy Smith collection, and you can see on the back of her head is a beautiful long braid. Each one of these mohair hairs were placed into her head, and uh, very beautiful, very expensive production. And in the product ID code for these dolls with the long hair, there was a little letter H, a capital H, to indicate this long implanted hair. These dolls were produced in a wonderful variety of beautiful little boys and girls. On the left, you can see a little girl. She's holding a bird from a slightly later time in Stipe's history, but this beautiful little girl has this delightful rosy coloring and bright blue eyes and, a, and a, uh, an outfit that is not original to her, but made from period fabrics and a dotted Swiss type of fabric. Here in the middle is a beautiful boy. Again, you can see his charming face and beautiful expression. He's all original. And believe it or not, he's wearing a backpack that is a pin cushion. So he's not only a doll, he's a pin cushion. He's just beautiful and rosy. And here on the far right, you see a little boy in a typical Tyrolean outfit, his beautiful, um, uh, jacket and uh, shorts with the suspenders and, and his, his ankle socks. Very, very um, German looking, very beautiful. These dolls clearly were young youngsters and belonged at school. So what Stipe did was create this wonderful schoolroom vignette. One of these sold for $50,000 at a Theory Alts auction in 2012. And you can see how beautiful this set is and why it might generate that kind of, of, of finances. These, out, these dolls are all original here, as far as I can tell from the picture. The teacher came with the set. Stipe would make the wooden benches and, and classroom accessories. And they also, the students came with these delightful backpacks that were mono, uh, uh, monogrammed. So you can see how lovely this charming vignette looks. Um, and according to the Selesnik's button and ear from 1989, the most famous is the village school in two designs, a smaller one with nine dolls as pupils and their teacher, and a larger one with 13 pupils and a teacher. All school furniture and accessories could be ordered from Stife. In 1910, Stife sold 45 complete school displays. So they're quite rare and quite beautiful and on my bucket list for sure. Let me give you a few dating hints for these beautiful children's dolls because they were in the line for a couple of decades and there are slight differences over time about their, about their detailing that can give you some ideas when they might have been made. Here you see on the left, the earlier hands are fist shaped with embroidered digits through about 1909. And then starting in about 1909 through the 1920s, what you're gonna see are these more, these more glove shaped hands with distinctive digits. And so that's one thing to look at, at the dolls that changed slightly over time in terms of their design. And the other factor that you may want to look at uh, that has to do with these, these obvious um, features, the earlier eyes are black shoe button style through about 1909. And these could be black shoe button in terms of being composite or wood or even black glass. Later eyes are glass pupil style from 1909 through 1920s. And you'll see these lovely blue and black 
glass pupil eyes. I've also seen them in brown and black glass pupil eyes. One of the things that's most interesting about dolls, um, these children dolls from the World War I era, is that their body construction really reflected the time, and that was a very hard time for production at Steiff. And this lovely little boy has given us permission to take a look at his body and construction. And what's fascinating is that his face, which is um, the most visible part of his, his presentation, is made out of felt, which is the sort of an expensive high-end fabric. His, his limbs are made out of an, a, a more inexpensive flesh-colored linen. Um, and that's because they're basically covered in clothes and you don't see them. And his torso is this a very rough um, Muslim material and it's, it's got a, some specks in it. And it's, 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 it's really a lower tier fabric. So what you see here is what is most visible is beautiful fabrics. What's a little less visible is acceptable fabrics and what's hidden really under a lot of clothes and such is, is a very inexpensive fabric. And of course, Steiff did the best what they could with the fabrics on hand. And nonetheless, the stall has a beautiful presentation and holds the secret of his, of his manufacturing era when you take his clothing off. Now let's talk about how these dolls were used in advertising and promotion. And obviously they have an adorable presentation and would look just beautiful under, under as, 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 as in cataloging, in postcards, in, in print advertising and such. Let's take a look at a couple of these examples. This is a postcard from my personal collection. This was created in 1909 to advertise that doll set that I had previously showed you a few slides ago. This was not produced by Steiff, but produced by a um, distributor in Paris to advertise this set. And he had set this up and um, photographed it and created a postcard to advertise these wonderful children in this schoolroom vignette. Here you see a postcard from 1913 celebrating Easter. And you see the beautiful children playing with uh, sheep and lambs, and many of those are on wheels, which is very typical to Steiff's animal construction uh, at that time. Just beautiful, very lifelike, very endearing. Here is a print ad from 1912 with children, these wonderful children dolls, playing with rabbits in a rabbit hutch. And one of the things about Steiff's advertising is they're always very endearing and very fun and very playful. Usually there's a little humor or a little joke associated with the illustration. And here you can see the rabbits are, are quite alive and the children are interacting with them in the most playful way possible. In 1913, Steiff came up came out with a line of these wonderful, beautiful children sort of dressed in a winter theme. And that means that they were in sweaters and, and, and woolen pants and hats and scarves and such. Very sweet and very endearing. And here is an advertising photo used um, to promote these, these wonderful wintertime children. And what's so interesting is that uh, for the most part, Steiff took many of their outdoor advertising photos on their own campus, which was in a very rural part of Germany with wonderful field and forest scenes and this little incline which suggests a sledding and skiing scenes, scene for these beautiful uh, fabric felt um, children. Here is a catalog page from 1924, moving along a little bit towards the end of the children production. And here you can see a number of these wonderful children uh, in, in the black and white part. And in the middle of the advertisement, you can see a fun vignette of the children playing and sort of emphasizing the Dutch children in this, in this scene here. Absolutely beautiful, very charming. Also from 1924, more children. Here they are playing and flirting and such um, in a scene, um, in, in a field with flowers. But the beautiful children, this is mostly girls here on the bottom and you can see as we talked about, the girls are in shoes and hats and quite lovely. Now I'd like to share with you um, one of my favorite displays that feature the Steiff children. And this is called the Mill in the Valley and it was made in 1926. It was designed by Steiff freelance doll designer and graphic artist Albert Schlopness. And this display included over 70 dolls in a village and farm setting and measured 15 square meters overall. So it was quite enormous, quite enormous. It needed a huge place, place to display this beautiful scene. This was taken out of storage and displayed at the Dollhouse Museum in Basel, which was 
previously known as the Pullman House Museum. It was on display in 19, excuse me, in 2004. And let me briefly read to you how it was cataloged. An obstinate donkey is standing on a bridge with his cart and master. At the village fountain, there is a group of farmers' wives gossiping together as they wash their clothes. Two men and two women are threshing the corn. A fireman attempts to put out a small fire, whilst a policeman keeps his eye on everything. Nearby at a river, two fishermen are trying their luck at making a catch, and the schoolmaster is giving his class a lesson out in the open. So this really is a village. Let me show you some highlights. Here you can see from that mill in the valley display here, beautiful children would appear to be dancing around a maypole, and you can see them in their beautiful outfits. They must have taken their hats off. Perhaps it was windy, but they're definitely in their shoes. Here you can see um, a sort of the humor that Stife likes to impart in their displays. Here you can see sort of a, 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 a drunk with a pig uh, just hanging out by the bridge, but there are, there are children in the background enjoying the beautiful day and the walk over the river. And here you can see fishing in the river, yeah, the child there learning how to fish. And here you can see people washing clothes and doing other typical town things. I think somebody is sketching here, an artist perhaps, but beautiful children again, uh, you can see them here. A policeman is watching to make sure everybody is on their best behavior. So although the children were beautiful and very successful, time marches forward. So Stife created their next uh, version of their children. And so we call these the new kids on the block and these were debuted in 1937 and appeared in the line through 1950. And so these were pressed felt face dolls. So you see there's no seam whatsoever in these dolls. They were um, head and leg jointed and basically for the most part, uh, children again in beautiful clothing. These were produced as these children and also as a clown, and also as a monkey, and also as a little gnome. So Stipe changed the manufacturing techniques to reduce it, the time and expenses to create them. It, it was very labor intensive to make these dolls, and also other companies were producing dolls without the seams, so Stipe really wanted to be competitive. Stipe started the research to create these pressed felt face dolls in the 1920s, but it took many years to, to uh, create a process that was uh, could be done on a commercial level and that debuted in 1937. So these sweet dolls appeared in the line through 1950 and are sort of considered a, a wartime and transitional model for the company. So that's what I have for you. I hope you enjoyed learning about Stipe's dolls from about 1908 through the 1920s. I hope they have gotten you in the mood to attend the Ohio National Doll Show. The show is October 23rd to the 26th online. So make sure to go and check that out and uh, find a new friend for your, for your doll or find a new stife for your, uh, a companion for your doll. Here are the folks that helped make this presentation possible. Most of the items are from my collection, but if they are not, they are from these folks and I appreciate their input very much. So thank you so much for your attention and for your interest and for your interest in the Ohio National Doll Show. I am happy to answer any questions you have about stife and here's how to connect so thanks again, Teddy Hugs. Enjoy the show, be well, and looking forward to seeing you again in person at the Ohio National Doll Show in 2021. Thanks and bye for now.